예, 안녕하세요. 아, 오늘은 그 이번에 그 프린스턴 대학교 그풀 파이낸스에 들어, 그러니까 전액 장학금으로 이번에 그 합격했던 합격한 그 김재환 학생 오늘 인터뷰를 하러 왔습니다. 그리고 재환 학생하고는 제가 개인적으로 인연이 있던 게 저희가 어, 일단 제 소개를 잠깐 해야 될것 같은데요. 예, 저는 이 아이 아카데미를 운영하고 있고요. 그리고 그 빅터 하고 그 IB 플래너라고 해서 같이 이제 미국 대학이나 한국 대학 그 컨설팅을 이제 같이 하게 됐고요. 이번에 재환이 소식을 듣고 어 너무나 기뻐했던 사람 중에 한 사람이었어요. 그 이어 텐때 그 화학 어 수학 올림피아드 그 준비반에서 그때 참참 참 어려고 이랬었는데 이번에 너무나 좋은 소식을 들어서 예, 너무 반갑습니다. 그러면은 제가 어, 우리 재환이 어, 질문을 제가 아마 궁금해하시 많을 테니까 제가 대신 재환이한테 질문을 하는 걸로 시작을 하겠습니다. Hello, my name is Jaewon Kim and last year I just graduated from King's College and this year I got into Princeton with full, uh, full financial aid and it's my pleasure to um, have this interview with you today. today. Are you on the scholarship at the school? Yes, I was on the scholarship for the last five years. It was an academic one. So for the first four years, I had to sit an exam. And then back then, I really didn't expect to get it. So I was so happy when I got it. And then for the fifth year, I had to apply for a re-extension, which I did get in the end. So that was really, I was really happy with that as well. Okay. Uh, so when did your Ivy League dreams begin? Um, my Ivy League dreams, I think they began around year 10, sort of mid to end of year 10. But then I, so that's when they started to begin. Although I heard of Ivy League um, when I was slightly younger, I didn't really seriously consider them until about mid to end of year 10. Okay. Um, what did you do to prepare for that dream? So I started preparing year 11. So I went to a few classes in EIE to start off with in year 10. So I took a couple of maths and English um, lessons back then. But then in year 11, I started preparing for the um, SAT subject test. So I decided, so my mom and I discussed this and we said, okay, since you're stronger in the subject than the general SAT, we'll try and do the subject test first and then we'll try focus on the um, general SAT tests in the end. So that's how I started off and then I, and then I began to engage in more extracurricular activities to um, add to my CV so I could have a chance at the Ivy League University. Um, when did you start preparing for the Mass Olympiad? Did you receive any outside help? So my first experience with um, Mass Olympiad um, was actually from school because there was a teacher there who set up a Mass Olympiad program for um, starting students. But then, when I started, it was quite a small group. So back then, um, I actually got quite, quite a hand on help with that teacher. Um, so that's when I first got in touch with Maths Olympiad. I wasn't too serious about it in the first year. But from year 10, I decided um, I want to give this a go. So the first time, I did work with EIE again for a couple of lessons in Maths Olympiad. And then I began to work, um, and then I began to work on my own with and then towards the end of the Mets Olympiad, when I actually got into the international team this year, I decided that I needed more intensive training. So that's the story of my Olympiad life. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, apart from Olympiad, what other activities were you involved with? So in school, um, King's College encouraged a lot of extracurricular activities. So in school, I did debating, water polo, badminton, and I also did a bit of music both the clarinet and the bassoon in the school cons band and the school orchestra, as well as some, uh, I actually did quite a few community service um, projects. Um, one of them was the minimal reception, which took most of my community service time in year 12 and year 13. But before that, since we weren't allowed to do minimal reception services, I did um, a, a mixed, um, a mixed uh, series of community service, I suppose such as um, daycare services and retirement home services. And then outside of school, I also did um, Queen uh, Scouting and the Duke of Edinburgh um, Award. 
So through that, um, I did quite a few trends um, throughout my scouting uh, throughout my scouting time. I had one one each uh, once a year. So they were mostly in the South Island. So I actually got to explore a lot of um, South Island um, sceneries in that way. And then at the end of last year and towards the beginning of this year, I I started finalizing my Queen Scout Award. So at the end of February, around February, I finally got my Queen Scout Award. So that's what I did for my extracurriculars. Okay. I think so you must be busy, but um, how did you control the time that the academy one and then you also spend a lot of time to, you know, the, the, um, you know, the um, extra curricula? Uh, how did you control your time? Um, so it was, I have to admit, it was actually quite busy, but with scouting, it was a bit more, I guess scouting wasn't too um, frequent compared to my other activities, so I guess that someone a bit alleviated it and I did have to make sure that I did have time to make um, time to do um, the things I need to do on top of the extracurricular activities other than the Olympiad. So it wasn't easy, but at least it was daily routine. So that was some that, was, that made it somehow easier. And I think that's the best advice I can give: just know what you really want to do, and make sure that you can give some time for the things you really have to do as well. That's the best advice I can really give. The application process is a long and difficult journey, especially in SATs. How did you do in that? So the SATs, as I said before, I actually started in year 11. But when I started in year 11, that was my subject test. So in the subject test, I generally did quite well. I did um, maths and the three sciences. So, I, so my scores there were um, quite, I was actually really happy with my scores back then. And then my year 13 SATs, I started from last year, the beginning of last year. Although I started preparing for those, I did prepare for the general SAT for the time I was preparing for the subject test as well. But then I started officially doing the test in year 13. So I actually had to sit it three times to get the score that was considered to be um, satisfactory, which is over 2300, I believe. Mm -hmm. for, that's the general rule of thumb. Although 2200 over is still, um, an okay safe line from what I've heard. But, so it took me three attempts, but I finally did it. And I have to say that in the last year, um, IV Plus's SAT courses helped me immensely. So, thank you, Victor. <laughs> That's good. Um, what do you feel like was the most difficult part of the application process? Well, the SATs were also quite difficult, but then I also found that the writing the essays, I also found that to be very tricky because to be honest, I'm not too much of a creative writer. And on top of that, I had to express myself creatively. Because these essays, a lot of these essays were quite personal and they asked for your personal details. So I, these essays did actually like, get me discussing with my mom, discussing about my life. And it was just about trying to make your life as interesting as possible and to show that you are a different person from all the other people out there. And to be honest, that is not an easy thing to do because for a lot of people, I can imagine, and I can, I can say this for myself, your life is your life, so it seems rather ordinary to you. To try and make it interesting, I think would be difficult for, it was very difficult for me because it was just my life and I felt that it was ordinary. So if application essays were definitely the hard, hardest part for me and Victor did help me a lot with this part, arguably a lot more than he helped me with the essays, which is actually a lot. Um, how was the interview? My, I'm assuming this is the Princeton interview. Can yeah. I just clarify that? Yes. My Princeton interview, it's quite funny because at the time I thought I did just okay, so so. I didn't feel it was my best interview ever. But then my interviewer actually contact me, contacted me a few days ago and she said, Oh, you're, you're a very interesting person. So I thought, okay, so this interview didn't go as badly as I thought it did. So <clears throat> I guess in the end I can say that it went quite alright because because I did get the admissions, which is what I was really happy about. But, so in the end, I don't, I'm not really too sure what they look for, but in the end, I have to say that my interview probably did go better than I thought I did. Okay. Well, how did you practice for that? Um, so at first, um, Victor actually did a practice interview for me um, for various admissions. 
So he asked me a couple of questions um, because he's also an Elements interviewer. So he had some he had some useful resources such as, like such as the um, I guess the model questions that Ellen and I are supposed to ask. So he either asked some of those to me and then oh through a different college at, at the perspective of different colleges. And at first I just say that I was nowhere near prepared before that, but after a while I got more comfortable with more interviews and more interviews. So in that sense I prepared for that in that way. And I'll, I also had to do a lot of research on the individual universities because of the fact that each university looks for different things and each university is unique and they want you to know that you know that each university is unique in their own way, even though they're all like the really, really top universities. Uh, you got into Princeton with a full financial aid. How did they feel and there was it a surprise? Uh, I was actually like really surprised with the amount of money I got. I was actually really, really delighted because I know a couple of people that actually weren't so fortunate as I was with the full financial aid package. So to, for me to get that, I was actually really, really, um, I was so happy with it. it Admit that, okay, my mother doesn't have to work all her life and my sister can actually do some more things. So yes, it was very good news to our whole family. So is it also that Victor is a half there for them? Uh, yes, Victor did tell my mom, okay, you have to explain your situation like this and so on. So he did call, he did coordinate my mom mainly because I had very little to do with the <laughs> financial aid organizing package because yeah. I don't know too much about my family's financial. I didn't know too much about my family's financial situation. Okay. Um, considering that uh, only two students from entire uh, South Korea got accepted and only two from entire Australia, how do you think you as a Korean New Zealander got in? But I actually felt so happy. Um, even without considering that statistics, I was actually really, really, I was over the moon that I got into Princeton. It was like, oh my god, wow, I actually got in. And I, did, I actually had to check again. I was like, you know, did I read that right? Did I read that right? And then I was happy that I did read it right. And then, so I was actually really, really happy. And then I found out that, I found out the statistics and I was like, okay, wow, I was actually a lot like, I, I'm actually a lot more fortunate than I thought I was. So that was my reaction when I found out the statistics. But even without that, I was really, really happy just from the competition in New Zealand itself. Congratulations again. Do you have any last pieces of advice for future applicants? I would say um, do look for extracurricular um, activities and do be involved. I agree with all, the, um, that kind of, um, all those advices, but ad advice, should I say, sorry. Um, but then you also have to choose the um, projects that you like. So I feel that's quite important. And then with the application essays, the text, and then do prepare quite a bit of time for those because it is a lot of hard work and I wish I took a bit more time preparing for my applications, especially with the essays. So I say take a bit more time and with the extracurriculars, do what you want and do a lot of it and be really involved in the things you do as well on top of that. Don't just be a passive um, attender. Hey, thanks for the interview. Oh, thanks for the, uh, today's interview. I think it's uh, very helpful for, for the, um, the students. Um, so I think I'm sure you must you must tell something for your parents. Why don't you in the camera um, so sort of, uh, tell to your parents? Okay. Um, I know this journey has been hard, especially for like the whole family as a well. whole. So thank you for being there throughout the whole way. And I know I couldn't have done this without your support. And also in addition to my friends and all the teachers at school, thank you for your support as well because all this journey, you guys have like, helped me get to this stage. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, your parents um, they must be proud of you and, and not only your uh, results and then your, you know, your uh, thoughtful, thoughtfulness for them. Um, my last question is, um, any plan before you go to, when you go to, uh, will you go to America? So I'm going to America, the semester starts in September, September yeah. so I'll be going around that time. Okay, so what, what do you want to, any plan before you go? Oh, so before that, I'm actually enrolled in Auckland University right now, mm -hmm. and in Auckland University, what I'm doing is mm -hmm. I'm exploring different courses, just mm -hmm. because in high school, I was actually focused a lot on the sciences. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, if I go to Auckland this year, I might just explore some other fields. So although I've, I'm still in maths, but mm -hmm. I know one of the courses is actually an applied mathematics course, which okay. isn't um, 
I guess high school doesn't explore that too much. So it was actually quite an interesting like, look upon like, applying maths in different fields. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also taking economics because I, just because I didn't take it too much, so I decided why not, I will have a look at economics this year. And I'm also taking philosophy mm -hmm. just for the same reason, because I didn't focus too much on the sciences. Okay. okay um, so still, so you, you, you want to study before you go. Uh, I guess like uh, maybe some, you know, the, the vacation, I mean, to go to some trips, but anyway, um, so what's your dream? What's your aim uh, in the future? So my aim, um, mm -hmm. I hope to be able to help a lot of people um, because I'm actually quite interested in the biotechnology area at this stage. Okay. But I think this, like, although this dream is quite fixable, I have to say like, it's not a set pathway. I think it could change, like, depending on how I do in Princeton and everything. Mm -hmm. But at this stage, like, what I found quite interesting was the fact that like, we're on food choices every now and then. So I think it'd be interesting to explore those kinds of fields so, um, where it actually helps like, different people okay. obtain these resources that they need. Okay. So I think those fields are quite interesting. Okay. I'm sure it's the, your dream is come true soon. And then, <laughs> yeah, uh, congratulations again. And then thank you for the interview. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.